Hello, I'm Dr. Joanna Wu, Director of the Trachi Observatory and faculty member of the Physics Department at Simon Fraser University. The observatory behind me was created to help make the stars seem a little closer to you, to communities here in Burnaby through our Starry Nights events, and also to the rest of the world through our live streams. The observatory is also used in undergraduate education. When we built the Trottier Observatory, we wanted it to be more than just a telescope, but a place that reminds us how telescopes help us understand our place in the wide story of the universe. For example, this concrete plinth has a bunch of colors in it. We call it spectrum, which kind of sounds like the word spectrum, like a rainbow. Distant light from space that we see through our telescope, we can spread out that color, kind of like a barcode of light to tell what something is made of, an ingredient list made of light from space. This one here represents the colors for hydrogen, which is the majority of what everything you see glowing in the night sky is actually made of. Like these stars, these are four star charts that show us what the sky looks like above us here in Vancouver. Why would we need four different star charts? Because our view of the night sky changes as the Earth orbits the sun. Here we are inside the observatory with our 70 centimeter telescope. Our telescope is housed in a protective dome which can open and rotate as needed to provide a view of the sky. Our telescope is just like a bucket that collects droplets of light from space, also known as photons. The light falls into the telescope, reflects off the primary mirror, and then ends its journey in your eye at our eyepiece. Light from a distant object may travel dozens or even millions of years to reach you. Light is also captured by our camera. Our camera uses a sensor that is cooled to sub-zero temperatures. Why do you think we'd have to cool the camera? We do so in order to reduce any noise in the camera introduced by heat, creating a cleaner image. Because these photons are traveling from vast distances, they fall to Earth more like a drizzle rather than a downpour, meaning we have to expose the image for hours at a time. And after hours of collecting data and processing the image, we arrive at pictures like this. This is an image of one corner of the Andromeda galaxy that I captured using our camera. This galaxy contains about a trillion stars as well as glowing hydrogen gas clouds shown here in pink. It's the farthest object we can see with the naked eye. Light needs to travel 2.5 million years to reach Earth. Here's an example of how we measure the light of a variable star. The counts here, when I put the bullseye on the stars, those counts are not exactly the photon count, but there's something that you can convert to photon counts. Now notice, when I put the bullseye over the sky, the empty sky here, the counts don't go to zero. Why do you think that is? This is due to a combination of instrumental noise, as well as the fact that the sky is not completely dark, especially in the city. Given that the sky has a non-zero count, what do you think we have to do to the star counts in order to find the real photon count in the stars? The sky background needs to be subtracted from the star counts in order to get the real counts of the star. We can take multiple images of the same star in order to measure how the light varies over time. We used variable stars just like this one to measure the distance to the Andromeda galaxy. So why does any of this matter? It's because you are a part of this grand story that is the history of the universe. 14 billion years of cosmic history that behind me we've squished into one calendar year called the Cosmic Calendar. So think of it like this. On January 1st, the universe is born in the Big Bang. And on this calendar, our galaxy, the Milky Way, shows up in March. Our solar system, our sun, all the eight planets are born in August. Multicellular life, complex life on our planet shows up in December and modern humans, we don't come around till 11.52 p.m. on December the 31st. Dinosaurs just went extinct yesterday. And all of this that we've discovered through science is primarily done with telescopes. 